Growth hormone, it's an important one. It's actually increasingly becoming amenable to treatment. Uh, this one comes directly from the central nervous system secreted by uh, the pituitary. In turn, regulated by the hypothalamus, so you can get an abnormality in either the pituitary or the hypothalamus. Often congenital from birth or can be acquired severe head injury or central nervous system tumor. How do you pick it up? Well, it's, it's a you know, it's the kind of thing that you don't really notice until there's already a hard to fix problem. Um, so when kids grow at a normal rate for a while and then fall off the growth curve, that's how you pick it up. So that's why the pediatricians uh, uh, pay such close attention to not only where you are in the growth curve, but, but your past trajectory to see if something's uh, dropping off. But it doesn't necessarily mean growth hormone deficiency. That could just be that person's idiosyncratic pattern of growth, or there could be uh, other problems, nutritional uh, disease. Um, so what do you do if you suspect it? So you've got a kid, they're, they're no longer keeping up with their past uh, trajectory. Well, go measure growth hormone, you might think. Um, but growth hormone is one of those that comes in a pulsatile fashion. Uh, it's hard to come in and time it at the right level. Uh, and so it's not always easy nail down the, the fact of a growth hormone deficiency. But uh, it does work, uh, particularly in clear cases. X-rays also uh, help um, in uh, diagnosis of the possibility of growth hormone replacement therapy. So um, there's a particular step uh, called a bone fusion that happens. We have more bones when we're born than we end up with because there's this process of uh, growth and meeting of bones and ultimate fusion of them. Uh, once they fuse, they can't grow more at that uh, interface. And so it's no longer possible to increase the length of the limb at that interface. And so growth hormone replacement therapy is useful pre bone fusion, but not post bone fusion. And so actually, successful therapy for growth hormone. Diabetes, this is the big one. 6.3% um, of the U.S. population in 2002. I uh, haven't seen the numbers from the latest census, but they're probably bigger. Uh, sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. at that point. Um, and it is really many different diseases all in one. Um, the, Basic problem is blood sugar regulation. That's what diabetes is, but it can be caused by multiple different uh, original problems, and those fall into two broad categories, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is juvenile onset or insulin dependent. Typically, it's autoimmune against the pancreatic beta cells that are releasing the insulin. And so you've got a person who can't make insulin. So what happens then? Well, blood sugar gets high. Blood sugar gets high, what happens? What do you think? What's going to happen as your blood sugar gets high? But stay high, but that's fine. You got a lot of sugar around, right? So you're good to go. Yeah, so osmolarity, that's when it gets very extreme. So normal blood osmolarity is about 300 milliosmoles. Patients who get into diabetic hyperosmolar trouble can, leave, can have coma and death, coma seizure and death. That, they can even get up to 900 milliosmoles. And that, so what's that going to do? That's going to suck all the water out of the interstitial space, out of the cells. And into that. Uh, other issues, what else is going to be a problem with too much uh, sugar around? You get kidney damage, you get a lot of end organ damage, typically in organs like the kidney that have extremely fine and important working blood vessels. Okay, and why does that happen? This is not at all obvious uh, why this would happen. But very high sugar over time will lead to increased uh, glycosylation, sticking on of sugars of, onto proteins. You get buildup of uh, not only the glycosylated proteins, but that will trigger in turn growth of uh, the endothelial cells and the fibroblasts that are in and around the blood vessels. 
End result of all that is you get narrowing of blood vessels. Uh, so blood doesn't get to end organs uh, efficiently. This is a chronic thing that happens over time. Uh, that means tissue becomes ischemic. It's not getting enough blood. It's not getting enough oxygen, not getting enough tissue. Blood immune cells can't get to the end organs as well, which means you're susceptible to infection. Uh, nerves aren't getting enough blood supply, so they start to, you get tingling, paresthesias, they start to be dysfunctional, causing pain or not allowing you to sense pain also. And people, you know, you're constantly shifting your position unconsciously due to receptors telling you it's time to shift, give that part of the skin a break. Diabetics don't have that, and so they have uh, pressure ulcers, uh, that skin breakdown, cause infection, death, and, and that's a, uh, so many, many things can happen. Uh, not obvious things that can happen as a result of chronic high elevated blood. But, you know, we can make insulin now. We know what the issue is. We can make it in a recombinant fashion, deliver it. Of course, the whole issue of the feedback control remains, but it's, uh, it works. This one's harder. Non insulin dependent or adult onset. Uh, plenty of insulin around, but the target tissues are not sensitive to it. They're not responding. In, in uh, are the receptors less sensitive? Why are they less sensitive? Completely unclear. Uh, it does seem as though uh, diet, overall weight, and exercise levels all play a role. Uh, sedentary lifestyles, overweight, low exercise, uh, diet in terms of lipids and sugar intake uh, clearly increases susceptibility. Um, and that's also the so uh, what are the symptoms? Well, high blood glucose, you can detect it early on. Because you have so much glucose, uh, that also creates osmotic pressure on the kidneys. You get urine, and that also then increases thirst, polydipsia. Uh, lose glucose through urine. Uh, that, of course, increases the metabolic need. Uh, and you have issues that you can run into, like fatigue, uh, weight loss, and weight gain. Of those particularly life-threatening, we get into the real life-threatening issues that we mentioned, damage to the end organs.